Let's learn something today. So what's the big idea of Numbers, the, the book of Numbers in the Bible? So the book of Numbers, the people of Israel really tested God's patience. And in turn, he tested their endurance and their faithfulness. Though the people of Israel failed many times to satisfy God, God still showed his own faithfulness by his constant presence and leading the way. Through a cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. So the book of Numbers is more than just a history lesson. The book of Numbers reveals how God intended or reminded Israel that he would not tolerate rebellion, complaining, and disbelief without invoking consequences. He taught his people how to walk with him, not just their feet through the wilderness, but with their mouths in worship, hands in service, lives as witnesses to the surrounding nations. So he was trying to make them missionaries, share the good word. So th through the book of Numbers, God is trying to show that he is their God, they are his people, and he expects them to act like it. So for our animal spotlight today, we're gonna to be talking about two different types of rabbits. You have the Eastern Cottontail and you have the Marsh Rabbit. The Marsh Rabbit is as its name implies, commonly found living in marshes or near a constant water source. The Eastern Cottontail, however, is found near open fields or pastures. The Eastern Cottontail, fun fact for you, the Eastern Cottontail is the most prolific of the rabbit species of the U.S., producing up to seven litters per year with as many as five young per litter. That's almost 35 babies per year. That's a lot to take care of. Rabbits are typically nocturnal, but can be seen during the daylight hours in the summer or during the breeding season, which the breeding season for them seems like it's year round. Um, rabbits are common prey for foxes, coyotes, bobcats, hawks, owls, and especially their arch nemesis, the great horned owl. They don't have a long life expectancy. Only about one in four rabbits will see their second birthday. For today's financial topic, we're going to be talking about a checking account. So a checking account is something you open at your bank. You can have unlimited withdrawals, unlimited deposits, um, and it's basically, you know whenever you see people write checks, it's basically the bank account for that, to put it, I don't know how to explain it. You don't write checks a whole lot nowadays. I think the last time I wrote a check was like three years ago. Um, it's not a very common practice anymore and it's kind of a fading away thing, but it's still really good to have and to know something about it. So if you wanna use like an ATM machine or if you wanna use a debit card, your checking account is where that money comes from. Checking accounts typically, like savings accounts, do not offer a lot of interest. Like I was saying earlier, maybe a quarter percent at best, these accounts, just like your savings, are federally insured up to $250,000. Now, the biggest loophole with the checking account, make sure you have enough money in it when you're writing checks, you're doing uh, your debit card, because they will charge you a fee if you overdraft. So let's say you only had $50 in your account. You wrote a check for 100. Well, now you also owe the bank a $50, $50 and you have to pay the overdraft fee too, which is anywhere between $25 to $75, somewhere around there. It typically isn't more than that. I highly recommend everyone have a checking account. It's a good thing to have. Hopefully I'll talk to you something new about checking accounts. On today's History Spotlight, we're gonna be talking about the first great civilization for the Americas, the Mayans. In Central America, at the south end of the Yucatan Peninsula, the southern tip of Mexico, the Mayans formed using a slash and burn technique. The slashing was the cutting down trees. The burning was the setting the tree stumps on fire. The ashes were used as a fertilizer for the new crops cleared on the land. So much of what we know now in forestry seems like it came from the Mayans. The Mayans successfully grew many crops from beans to papayas to avocados and most commonly maize, otherwise known as corn. But the slash and burn farming technique wore out the soil and after a few years, farmers had to start over with a new plot of land. So I guess they did, I guess they learned something new. So the reason they think the Mayan culture actually began a downturn was because they used up their soil and they couldn't keep reusing it. So they had to move so much. So they couldn't establish a big culture or civilization at one place. But they also think it could have been from war, drought, disease, or a number of any other things. 
Now the Mayans were very creative. They made these large temple type pyramids in present day Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Mexico. Now there's many different things you've heard with the Mayans. You've probably heard the Mayan calendar. They were very innovative for their time and ultimately a lot of successes we have today is due to the Mayans. Our inspiring quote of the day is by Aristotle and it says, it is during our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. That's this wrap of this episode. Hope you learned something today.